Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. This video is for my Physics 1 students. Today's lab experiment, we're looking at Newton's second law of motion, which really looks at the relationship between the forces affecting an object, the mass of that object, and its acceleration. It usually gets written out as this little formula, F equals MA. We're talking about looking at all the forces affecting that object, how that net force, that total force, should equal that object's mass times its acceleration. In this experiment, we're going to use this dynamics card. It has a built-in force sensor. There's a little hook. You'll see it better in a few minutes. A um, little hook here, as I'm going to be pulling on it and pushing on it with my hand, it's going to register how much force is being applied to this cart. There's going to be very little friction in these wheels and ball bearings to worry about. So we're just assuming that the net force is the force being applied by my hand. It also has a built-in accelerometer. So this little wheel on the bottom is able to measure the car's change in position. That'll let the lab quest calculate its velocity and then in turn calculate its acceleration as well. So this little car is measuring the force for us. It's gonna give us the acceleration. We're gonna look at those relationships as well as talk about the mass of this car. So let me show you first all the materials that we're going to need for this experiment. So the materials we're using for this experiment, first your lab handout available to my students on Canvas where you download and print out. Uh, I've got a digital scale so we can measure the mass of this car. We're going to be adding some extra masses onto this car during the second part of the experiment. I used a level right here just so I could make sure that my track is nice and level, that my car wasn't trying to roll uphill or downhill, but that way it just wants to stay nice and stationary and we don't have gravity playing a role as trying to make the car accelerate. Um, got my lab quest here. Um, I was able to adjust this by the way, by using these little um, legs here to make one end a little higher, the other end a little shorter just to get everything in balance. And like I said earlier, on our dynamics card, we got a little hook here that's been screwed into the force sensor. All right, so I'm gonna get this dynamics card set up so that it's talking to our lab quest and transferring its information. And then we'll come back and get started on the experiment. So I took this dynamics card connected it to this lab quest so that it is currently set to measure position and force. Now on our graphs, and I'll show you these as we do each one, get it in the focus there. Our graph right now, we're looking at the bottom graph has force versus time. This graph on top, we're looking at the acceleration versus the time. And each trial, I will bring this over, you know, show it to you more clearly so that you can see it. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it very well when it's you know, back here and getting the camera set up so that you can see the car moving back and forth, but I'll make sure and bring it into view each time for you. We need to get the mass of this car. So set it down here on the scale. I got 289 grams. All right, so 289 grams, it's gonna bounce around there a little bit. 289 grams, convert that to kilograms in order to use that in your calculations ready to do part number one trial number one I'm gonna start my data collection by touching this little arrow that you probably can't see very well grasp this hook give it some pulls back and forth sometimes a little harder sometimes a little softer right there all right and so then what we see here okay, this you want to you know see these two graphs so that you're able to answer some of your analysis questions. But you see again, the acceleration graph here on top, the force graph here on the bottom. And hopefully what you're noticing, even though they're just different colors, is that they really correspond with one another. All right, so next thing that we're trying to do with this is just basically turn this into one graph. So give me a moment and I'm gonna set that up for you. What I've done is instead of having our two separate graphs before, 
I set my lab quest up to just show one graph, showing the force on the y-axis, the acceleration down here on the x-axis, and took off any kind of point connector. So all you're seeing are the dots of data that the lab quest was collecting for us. And what we want to do is look at then the relationship between this force and acceleration. So to do that, I'm going to analyze this data by applying a curve fit line to this force graph. And so you can see these little data points in here and you see this trend line, this black line that it's inserted in the form of this equation that you're familiar with from algebra that y equals mx plus b. So the y value equals the slope times the x value plus the y intercept. And so what your data table asks you to record, so this is part one, trial one, ask you to record your slope, which is M right here, so 0.295, and to record this Y intercept, so negative 0.0211. You can carry out those other extra decimal places right there if you want to. Going out to the you know thousandths place should be more than sufficient. So we're doing part one, trial two. I'm gonna start my data collection. Begin by applying a force to my car. Data stops after five seconds. And we want to analyze this the same way we did trial number one. So I'm going curve fit. And so now slightly different slope there for M, 0 0.0337. And slightly different Y intercept, negative 0.0358. All right, so record those two values, part one, trial number two. And now we're going straight in to trial number three. So I'm going to start this data collection. I'm going to apply some various forces to my car. And once it stops itself again, we want to analyze this data. So curve fit, force. All right, so again, there's your slope and your y-intercept. Slope's 0 0.3114 um, and y-intercept negative 0 0.0241. All right, so now that we have those three trials recorded here, let me zoom in. It's not going to let me. All right, but now that we have those three trials for part one, you're just going to average those three slopes average those three y-intercepts, then that's gonna let you write your own equation in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And then knowing that formula, y equals mx plus b, then you can come in and say, okay, well, if my force was one newton, what would my acceleration equal? Or if my force were negative one newton, what would my acceleration equal? Keeping in mind that on your graph right here, the force is the y value. The acceleration is the x value. So back to this data table again here. So we're saying, okay, if y were negative 1, what would x equal? Or sorry, if y were positive 1, what would x equal? If y were negative 1, what would x equal? All right, so now we're going to set this up for part two. Only difference on part two is we're going to add those masses to the cart. So I'm going to set this up and measure the cart with those additional masses. I chose to add all four additional masses to my car. Now we're going to take this, set it on the scale, hopefully keep it from rolling off. And now we have 788 grams. Again, just like part one, make sure you convert those grams into newtons, but 788 grams for the new mass on part two. Part two, trial number one. Same as part one, I'm gonna start my data collection. I'm gonna give this cart some pushes and pulls, changing its direction, changing how hard I'm pulling at times. And we want to now analyze this data again. All right, so again, just like we did analyze curve fit, we're looking at the force. 
And so now part two, trial one, I have a slope of 0.841 and a y-intercept of negative 0 0.017. All right, so that's trial one, part number two. And we'll go straight into doing trial number two. So I will start my data collection again. Again, pulling on my car, sometimes a little harder, sometimes a little softer. We got our data plotted out here, lots of points all over the place. We want to analyze that, curve fit. Now we have a y, or sorry, slope first, slope of 0.8162 and a y-intercept of negative 0 0.05. 0985 and again yeah round off a few of those decimal places will be perfectly fine all right so that was trial two now part two trial number three so i'm going to start that data collection move my car around here and now analyze this data so analyze curve fit force and this time we get a slope of 0.846 and a y-intercept of negative 0 0.00534. All right, so that's all three trials for part number two. You're going to want to do that data the same way you did on part number one. Average those three slopes. Average those three y-intercepts. Use that to write your slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. And then plug in what if your force were your positive one, what's x, what's your acceleration? And if you have a force of negative one, what acceleration or what x value would that create? Hope all that information, that data was clear for you. Again, you're looking at Newton's second law. We're talking about how force, mass, and acceleration are all related to one another. And hopefully what we're able to see is that the more force you apply to an object, the greater its acceleration is going to be, so that force and acceleration are directly proportional. But the more massive an object is, the less acceleration it's going to have when you apply a particular force to it. So if you increase an object's mass while keeping the force constant, the acceleration is going to decrease, so that mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. But again, Newton's second law of motion is putting those two relationships all together to say that the net force equals mass times acceleration. So, as always, if you need extra help, feel free to reach out to me, but y'all have a great day.